Hi everyone, this is Odd Apostrophe. Let's continue our game of Iwahime on PC. <laughs> Up through middle school, I had been living a completely different life. When I was in grade school, my hatred of boys ran rampant, and thanks to some bad influences in middle school, I became even worse. <sighs> my change was triggered when I heard Susumu would be moving here. The two of us played together when we were little, so the topic brought back vivid memories of my life before I strayed off the path. At that moment, I realized I couldn't live with the person I'd become. So I decided, so decided to turn over a new leaf once I entered high school. I cut ties with all that stuff, made a fresh start with an innocent young lady, and strove for my childhood dream to become the perfect wife once more. <laughs> It had been a year since I'd started training to be a wife, aka helping out the chores. If they were teaching femininity in school, then I'd just be finishing first grade. It took me until high school to start learning the things most girls learn learned in grade school at the earliest and middle school at the latest. <laughs> Yet I'm supposed to participate in a cooking contest? Against Jack of All Trades Minobe and Miss Perfect Lydia at that? And I had to stop calling Suzumu by his name if I lost. That mean I'd lose Suzumi to one of them too. <laughs> I flopped onto the bed and closed my eyes. I should have been laughing at how silly it was, yet tears streamed down my cheeks. Suzumu was practicing in the backyard again. He would concentrate, practice his form, clear his mind, then punch the tree aplenty. That was his routine every single day. I found it odd at first, but my family and I had grown used to it by this point. Suzumu. Nani? Suzumu lowered his hips and held the pose. It didn't look like much at first, but I could only imagine it took a lot of muscle strength to hold it that long. It wasn't something he was born able to do. It must have become second nature to him after years and years of training. Suzumu was... いつから修行してるの。いつから修行してるの。物心がついた時にはもうやってた気がするな。それって小学校より前からってこと。うん。もちろん年相応な内容だったけれどね。なるほどね。ズムの強さは一朝一夕じゃないわけだね。same could be said for cooking or being a lady. Any kind of skill takes constant effort. There are no shortcuts in this world. I tried acting like a dainty flower on the surface. But on the inside, I was still the same rabid beast. Nani <sighs> Oh, 
ら、スズムが結婚したいと思う女の子のこと。A normal girl. Most people would probably take those words at face value. But those words weighed heavily on me, having only started living a normal life a year ago. For me, a normal girl was defined by the number of years she lived an ordinary life. As such, I didn't even qualify as one. Mosimo, d i o Hm. Suzumu no riso to chigo. Futuni itara naiko ga koko hako ste kitara. Do suru? Futuni itara naiko te. Do you i m i ちゃんは異性と付き合ったことってあるえな,ないよ全然ない一度もない僕もないよだから経験も修行もゼロなんだ人を愛して結ばれてそして幸せになるのにも技量がいるんじゃないかなって思うことがあるんだ技量って変な言い方友達同士だってさ気遣いってあるよねだからいつまでも仲良くいられる親しい仲だからってそれにあぐらをかいてたら喧嘩にもなるし友情だって終わることもある I believed love to be an invincible bond that unconditionally Bridged all divides between men and women. But Suzumu's point was valid too. A hedge between keeps friendships green, as they say. A slip of the tongue or a single thoughtless action could end both friendships and romances. That wasn't something taught in school, it was something you learned from experience. Dakara, b o k t a c h a t a k s a n o t o m o d a c h to call you stay, so they all m a n a n d e k i t a n j a n a i k a n a それと恋人同士も同じだっていうわけうんだから僕はもし女の子に告白を受けたら付き合ってみたいなって思うそうすることでお互い恋の育み方が学べると思うし人間も深まると思うんだひょっとしたら相性が合わなくて別れてしまうこともあるかもしれないけど二人はとても大切な経験を得て次につないでいけると思うよ進むの恋愛感ってすごいねそうかなキコちゃんが言うならそうかもしれないねスズムはラクションピッタタオルオフトポーチ Just then, Mom came outside and placed out a pot of tea nearby. Man, was I insensitive. I should have been one to do that. In that sense, Mom would have to be more of an expert than me in these matters. Of course, she was. She married Dad and had a daughter, who ended up going down the wrong path at that. She'd made it this far, amassing plenty of experience points in life. I needed more feminine experience. Experiences in my life, too. Nanny, what? What does she got? Some coin of being your not too many. Do you think we could go out? Oh. Yeah, right. Like I could ever say that. Man. My dream to become the perfect wife. I could never forget how it started. It happened back when I was in kindergarten. That prayer slip placed between all those dangerous items on my shelf was the beginning of it all. 
I want to be the perfect wife when I grow up. Tsubakiko. That was the first dream I'd ever had. If I had struck, stuck to those feelings and lived an honest life, how wonderful of a woman would I be by now? I threw myself onto the bed and went over my life. Why did I go down the wrong path? I got into fights with boys all the time, and being the dumb kid I was, thought it made me cool. Damn it. I wished I could turn back time and do it all over again. I started to focus on my childhood days. I remember them so well. Susara was a lot different back then, wasn't it? I don't feel like there used to be so many houses. There used to be a lot of fields, but those were gradually replaced by houses and parking lots. I loved going to the local park. There were always people I knew playing there. We'd have fun playing on the slide and in the sandbox. I never even once thought about fighting or anything. Back then, I honestly believed there were three kinds of people. Family, friends, and future friends. I remember what it felt like, but not all the details. But that was good enough for me. If only I could return, back to when there were infinite possibilities laid out before me. The slide was fun no matter how many times I went down it. I loved making mountains of sand and digging holes. The deeper you dug, the cooler the sand got. Whenever I got thirsty, I would run over to the water fountain and greedily gulp the water straight out of the faucet. My friend's mothers would be sitting on the benches, smiling and waving at us. I could get along with anyone here and make friends with them easily, even if we'd only just met or I didn't even know their names. Everyone was nice. There was even this older man who would buy drinks for the kids. There was something strange on the bench near the swing. It was sitting. No, it was bulging on said bench. It was a giant flabby lump of flesh. A blob. I couldn't really explain it. It was like an obese man's stomach had become a giant mass of meat. Something like hair was strewn between its rolls of fat, reminding me of my father when we took baths together. I thought nothing of it with my father, but with other people it really disgusted me. But that impression was only in hindsight. Back then, I doubt it bothered me. After that, all the kids would gather around him with beaming smiles when he brought ice cream out of a shopping bag and called us over. And I was no different. Everyone was crazy for the blob giving away ice cream for free. I was the same. I didn't get to have ice cream much because my parents said it'd give me stomach aches. Just then, the blob reached out its hand as it spoke to me. Nowadays, I would have found that repulsive, but the young me had no such reservations. A slimy, arm-shaped lump emerged from the blob and stroked my cheek. A gooey, sticky thread covered in sweat hung, over, hung between my cheek and the blob. No. No, stop it. It's so gross. Yet the young me was happy, engrossed with the blob that always gave me free treats. My chest was growing tighter and tighter. It was struggling to breathe. It was the stench, that reek of a rotten stomach, the rank smell of acidic sweat. I gasped for air. But all I could do was keep watching that scene from an outside perspective, like on a TV show. Just then, the giant's blob, the giant blob's eyes met mine. It slithered off the bench with a creeping sound. It made its way through the children merrily stuffing their faces with ice cream and approached me. I was frozen in place. All I could do was watch as that thing wriggled toward me. Meanwhile, the young me just kept licking her popsicle. At that moment, the blob opened its giant mouth 
as though it was going to eat me alive, which unveiled everything hidden within. Its pungent breath, putrid as a boiling sewer, its tongue covered in warts like a sea cucumber, grimy teeth flicked with yellow spots. It was going to swallow me. No, no, no. All of a sudden, the world was filled with radiant light. The foul blob writhed in pain upon its arrival. It groaned as it slithered away. I was saved. Just then, my savior appeared within the warm light. Suzumu emerged from the brilliant light. He'd saved me. I cried in Suzumu's arms for a while. Gradually, I calmed down and realized I'd been having a nightmare. いやな夢だったみたいだね。私、夢見の悪い方みたいで、ぼんやりしてる時とかにもよく気持ち悪い夢を見たりするの。最近はそれほどでもなかったんだけど、久しぶりにどこ森級のを見た気がする。どんな
garden my ass, there wasn't a single flower in there. And a sanctuary, with the gang flag, jacket, and posters of demons and skulls hanging around. Who did I think I was kidding? I grabbed Susanoo by the collar, my fence, my face drenched with sweat and tears. More than anything, I wanted to dig a hole and bury myself in it at the moment. I heaved and coughed my breath, and finally came back to my senses. Was that really my idea of a confession? What the hell was that? On a scale of one to ten, I'd get a minus one hundred for femininity on that one. それは僕も同じだよ。今の僕じゃ仮にキコちゃんと結婚したとしても幸せにできる自信なんてないよ。だから二人で一緒に勉強していこう。さすがにキコちゃんを僕のお嫁さんにするなんて約束はまだできないよ。だって僕はまだ未熟だから、キコちゃんを幸せにできる自信がない。でもそれはキコちゃんも同じでしょ。だったら二人が互いを幸せにでき
僕も実は何を言ってるのかちょっと分かんなくなってる I looked up to discover Susumu's cheeks were adorned with a rare red tinge I was the one who went all crazy so he was trying to play it cool for me but I could tell he was just as nervous that made me happy but it wouldn't be fair to ask any more from him I sat up straight and bowed my head to Suzumu. Just then, Suzumu sat like me and repeated my actions. Boku Koso Boku a Kito Kiko Chan Ga Kitai Sir Hodo no Dipa na Otoko Janai. Takara, Warui Tokoro Ga Atara Nausi, E Tokoro Ga Atara Nobashtai. Soreo Tashkame Ai, Nausi Ai. Sono Ue de Mada. 僕がキコちゃんのお婿さんにふさわしいと思ってくれたならその時お互いを運命に委ねよう<笑>なんでそんなに落ち着いてるのひょっとして告白されたこと結構あるそんなわけないよほら手のひらはびっしょりだよ Susumu showed me his palms, which I took into my own. They were warm, and I could tell his heart was beating as fast as mine. Susumu, I'm a little bit of a pain. I'm a little bit of a pain. I'm a little bit of a pain. I'm a little bit女の子とお付き合いなんかしたことがないからどうすればいいかわからないけど。ご安心召され。私もだよ。なんだろう。そのえっと。うん。が頑張ろう。えいえいお。We both laughed. I never knew the moonlight shining through the curtains could be so gentle. It illuminated the tinges in our, on our cheeks, revealing our growing embarrassment. Pounding in my chest was so great that I could barely take any more. If we sealed this night with a kiss like a romance novel, our hearts would explode, no doubt about it. So we simply said goodnight to each other, and Susan Moo returned to his room. His door was locked, so he said he'd go back through the window. Ending a series of romantic events on that note was so silly I couldn't help but laugh. It was Tsubakiko Harum,、uh, Harumiya, a junior in high school. And I finally found myself living a normal adolescent life. The big day was finally coming up. The day of the Iwaimato Happy Fun Carnival, the day the, of the LCSE's rummage sale. And so today was the night of the sleepover, the day of the cooking competition for Suzumu's heart. The members gathered at school in the afternoon. We moved the rummage sale goods to a truck belonging to the Shopping District's Association. Several of the stronger members of the association came to help, so the job went quicker than expected. We finished preparing for tomorrow, leaving us totally free for the rest of the evening. Ja, oh, you're so good, I'm sure. Sensei, 
からちょっと野球部の休館対応に行ってくるわそろそろお夕飯の支度だねお互い恨みっこなしだよはい鈴原先輩熱田先輩ご敬中願います女子は家庭科室を使いますので先輩方は申し訳ありませんが宿直室で炊飯器の準備をお願いしますオイラたちが料理をするところは見ちゃダメなのだ誰が作ったかがわからない状態で先輩に一番おいしいと思ったおかずを選んでもらいます私も頑張る頑張るじゃあ俺と笹原は。宿直室で飯を炊こうぜ腕が鳴るぜ炊飯器でご飯を炊くのに腕が鳴るもないもんだけどね<笑>じゃあ夏くん僕たちもできる限り頑張ろうなあ Though they were only making rice and miso soup The boys headed for the security office in unnaturally high spirits. The three of us headed for the home economics room as invisible sparks flared between us. Now, the rule is to be able to get the rule. The rule is to be able to get the rule. The rule is to be able to get the rule. The rule is to be able to get the rule. The rule is 屋上で2人きりのデートを歯医者はそのお膳立てに協力していただきますよろしいですねの望むところだ私たち3人でそれぞれ一品ずつを作り鈴原先輩にどれが一番美味しかったかを決めてもらいますどれも同じくらい美味しいって言ったらその時は。副審判のナッチーの出番さん熱田先輩はそういうとこはきっちり白黒つけてくださるでしょうからね確かに熱田くんならそうだね春宮先輩が負けた時には鈴原先輩のことは以後「鈴むと呼ぶのは禁止ですからねわ私が勝った時は2人は鈴むと2人きりで会うの今後禁止ねだってリリアちゃんは芸能人としての指導を受けたいんでしょ二人きりじゃなくても問題ないよねままあそうですねみのべ先輩もね部活で会う以外はすずむと会うの禁止ふんひこちいさ先週とずいぶん態度変わったねかなそういえばそうですね先週はどちらかというと日和みな感じだったのに今日はやる気満々で鈴原先輩を勝ち取ってやるっていう闘志を感じます分かっちゃったぞオイラたちにスズムを取られるかもって思ったら短すぎて気づかなかったスズムへの思いに。気づいちゃったんだなぎぎっくり<笑><笑>なるほどでもそういう潔さ契服しますよそうでなくっては We each began setting up our cooking stations We had all brought the ingredients in our spare time And so we took them out of the fridge <笑>ヒコチーは豚のひき肉かハンバーグかなあ、no. She figured it out from the ingredients alone. 決めつけは早計です。餃子かもしれないし、麻婆豆腐もありえますね。そぼろを作れば応用も効きますし。You could use minced pork for more than hamburger steak. Oh. God, my lady credentials were at an all time low. Lilia ちゃんは牛肉豚肉です。この大き
さで牛肉だったら予算オーバーしちゃいますよおやおや豚肉かぶりだねおいらはお魚なのだみ見延べ先輩すごいお魚おろせるんですかえおろせるわけないしそんなスーパーの鮮魚コーナーで頼むだけだよおや柵にしたんですかお刺身を切るのって結構腕がいりますよ<笑>そこは計算ずくなのだ This was really bad We'd only opened the fridge and already everyone could tell I was a peasant in the presence of noble women My mom had put me through the ringer this past week to teach me how to make a hamburger steak. She said that a hamburger steak is the straightest path to a boy's heart. All boys love meat, and cooking a hamburger from scratch really makes the flavor stand out, according to her anyway. I didn't just take her at her word either. I did my fair share of online research too. Thanks to that, I learned drawing something with ketchup can also be effective. If I drew a heart, then he'd be forced to recognize just how cute and feminine I was. No doubt about it. I'd had plenty of experience with graffiti, so my art skills were off the charts. Ah, I smell it. I smell it. I smell it. I smell it. ま、料理対決 in other words, a preliminary match with Miss Hinagata as the judge. ほら、ほら。ハルミヤさんはおとめの定番の手作りハンバーグね。うん、可愛らしい。スペードが書いてある。あ、それは逆。ハートです。てえ、どこ書いてある。あ、それは逆。ハートです。てえ、どこ書い
作れて美味しくて男子大好きこれが身延県の料理の神髄さやりますね男子は丼ご飯が大好きそれを読んでくるとはお刺身の不揃いな感じが実にあざとくて憎いわねなるほど手作り感を出すためにわざと柵をですかこれは男子はイチコロかもですねリリアちゃんのもすごいねいい匂い私は甘く味付けしたカツトジですそしてそれを熱々ご飯の上にどっさりのせるとはいカツ丼の出来上がりですお肉大好き丼ご飯大好きそんなお腹を空かせた男子高校生が大喜びするメニューですやるねリリアンも丼作戦できたかまあ勝とうと策を練れば当然の結果ですけれどねこれは好物がつけがたい勝負になるわ魚と肉の好みの勝負になるわね Way Miss Hinagata said that implied that my own chances were next to none I knew it I knew I couldn't win but even if I lost I'd already confessed to Suzuma but, but what Did that night mean to him anyway? The truth was, not much had changed between us since the day I confessed. It was kind of embarrassing, so we kept on acting the same as always. I was pretty sure Suzumu had accepted my confession, though. So, even if I lost, we were already a couple, right? But Minobi was clever, while Rydia was relentless. If one of them got him alone on the roof, they might very well make something happen. Oh, God. I'll live an honest life from now on. So please, please grant me a miracle. We brought our dishes to the girls' room in the dormitory. The dorm was generally used by sports clubs to stay the night before a tournament. But tonight, we'd be using it for the dinner and sleepover. And the boys had finally arrived. The moment of truth was upon us. Oh, my God! Great! Oh, my God! 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 たくだけで大げさだね炊飯器で美味しくご飯を炊くのもちょっとしたコツとかありますしお味噌汁も男子の担当だったかしらそっちも楽しみね鈴間がお味噌汁を作ったの僕と夏くんも合作だよお互い
これは驚いたわすすはるくんは何だか料理ができそうなオーラがあったけどああつたお兄ちゃんって料理できたんだねそそういえば自宅お惣菜屋だったっけ熱々お惣菜の熱さ惣菜店の跡取り息子熱さ夏也ここに健ちゃん All right, why don't we stop it there?、Uh, this is a u t o p o s t r o p h e You've been watching the Wai Hime on PC. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.